getting to St Helena can be a mission. The only way is by sea, and you could, as we did, go by yacht. But for most, the adventure includes a trip on one of the very few remaining operational Royal Mail ships in the world, the RMS St Helena. And that's a fun trip if you don't mind adding 10 days to your holiday. It's a cargo ship that also carries passengers, and although it's heavily subsidized, the price for the 10-day round trip from Cape Town is eye-watering. Cargo is extremely expensive too, and as practically everything is shipped into the island, the cost of living is high. And these days, you'll be hard-pressed to get a berth at all, simply because the ship is heavily booked with government officials, working groups, contractors, consultants, and the Centelinians themselves, who rely on it as a long-distance ferry. Tourists? A very few intrepid souls determined to visit what the tourism office claims, with shameless hyperbole, is the most extraordinary place on earth. But now at last, 14 years into the 21st century, an airport is under construction. But why has it taken so long? One look at the place and the answer is immediately apparent. There's barely enough flat land to pitch a tent. Jamestown lies jumbled along the bottom of a steep ravine. How do you even begin? Almost every piece of equipment has had to be shipped in, along with all the suitable sand, cement, reinforcing bars, offices, air conditioning. Nothing can be overlooked. It took a year of preparation even before building began. It all starts here in the ravine that opens onto Rupert's Bay. First, they built this roll-off landing to unload the Leviathans. Then they had to get them to the site, and that meant building 14 kilometers of alpine-like access roads. An army of surveyors, planners, engineers, managers, a complete village with water, electricity, sewage, provisions. It just goes on and on. What of the site itself? Prosperous Bay Plain is neither prosperous nor plain, if you mean plain to mean flat. It's deeply slashed across by ravines that the locals called guts, and to make a runway, these have to be filled. The big one is dry gut. It spans the last 400 meters at one end of the runway and needs more than 8 million cubic meters of compacted fill. The story goes that two of the advance party reconnoitering the site, Basil Reed's island director, Dion Diacha, and HR manager, Charles Swartz, stood looking down at the massive area to be filled. Dion idly tossed a rock over the side and watched it bounce, rattle and clatter its way all the way down to the bottom. Well, said Charles, that's a start, I suppose. This is the runway level, and below you can see the area that's been filled so far. 6,5 million cubic meters already delivered. Only another 1,2 million to go. 8 million cubic meters. How do you visualize that? Well, if you were to dump all that soil into the Nelsprade World Cup soccer stadium, you'd fill it to the roof. About 20 times. 24 hours a day, 6 days a week, 4 teams of 5 40-ton trucks at work, each truck carrying 15 cubic metres of excavated fill. The airport itself, the control tower, standing apron, freight and passenger areas are under parallel construction with the runway, and the scope of the project is both extraordinary and impressive. It's the biggest project Basil Reed has ever undertaken outside South Africa. They say it's bread and butter, and I believe them. On track? Yes, pretty much. The whole airport is scheduled to be operational in late 2015. How do the islanders feel about the airport? It seems from the number visiting the site now that after some initial scepticism, interest is growing. They'd heard promises for years, but now it's actually happening. How does business, particularly those in hospitality and tourism, feel about the island's prospects for much-needed visitor dollars? Importantly, Will the airport help reduce the island's reliance on UK funding, currently running at over £2 million a month, £25 million a year? The hope is that 10 years of investment up front, as it were, will allow them to reduce the annual funding by 10% a year. In that way, they hope that in 10 years, the island will be totally self-sufficient. Will it work out that way? Well, don't look at me, I'm just a yachty but I'm hoping my next visit to Centralina will be much more comfortable in getting here than was the last. Mm -hmm.